Hello, my friends. Today is Lautari Sunday, which is indeed a day to rejoice because Lent is halfway over. Thanks be to God, Jimmy John's is just around the corner. And I know I promised that my video would be out last Friday, two days ago, but I just have three words for you. Get over it! Because guess what? I'm not perfect, I make mistakes, and I am pretty busy. So, but here it is. And today is a special celebration because this is my 10th episode ever. If you count the first two episodes um, that were made with Pete Hutchison and Peter LaFond, and also the last eight episodes that I've made for the Advent series and the Lent series, but don't include the intro to the Advent series, then today is indeed my 10th episode. And what a thing to celebrate today on Lautari Sunday of all days. So many reasons to rejoice. And so, my friends, today I thought we would hear from some of the critics, some of my classmates and friends and family members to see what they really think, how awesome they really think my Ask Father Amter series really is. So stay tuned. Here we go. I decided to give up watching Father Amther's videos for Lent, but my spiritual director said I need a real penance. Thanks a lot, Father Coster. That's really awesome of you. Father Amther's videos teach people to use the off button. Hashtag, am I right? No, you are not right. According to Father Amther, the meaning of life is running, Netflix, and God. Well, got one of those right. Question is, which one? I love Ask Father Amther. It is my favorite show on the Facebook. So proud of you, dear grandson. Hashtag, gotta love your granny. Thanks, Granny. Ask Father Amther is great to watch late at night when you're having a hard time trying to fall asleep. Really, Matthew? Really? Father Amther holds the camera so close, the next video will be a tour of the inside of his mouth. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I used to look forward to Easter because of the resurrection. Now I look forward to Easter because it's the end of Ask Father Amther. Hashtag, gonna eat some ice cream now. <sighs> My friends, here we are in St. Peter's Food Pantry. And I can't think of a better place to begin our talk on the offertory as we continue to move through the Mass this Lenten season. Now, the offertory is when we offer up our gifts. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yep, this is the time to sit back and relax and, you know, maybe get some money out of our wallets. But it's really kind of a time to take a break before all the interesting stuff starts to start up again. But if we think of the offertory as just about money, then we miss the whole point of the offertory. The offertory is the time when we decide what we're going to offer up to the Lord. We're about ready to meet Him face to face, and we don't want to be embarrassed by having nothing to offer. So sure, we might offer money. We might offer food, as we often do at St. Peter's. We might offer a sacrifice that we've made throughout the week. We might offer um, some hardship that we've gone through. Um, whatever it may be, no matter how big, no matter how small, it's your sacrifice, it's your gift to the Father. And so during this time, as we sit down after the prayers of the faithful, we begin to ponder what gifts we desire to give to the Lord. And then as we see the gifts brought up, the money, the food from the, for the food pantry, but most of all, the bread and the wine, we should see in them our sacrifices. 
we should see all of our sacrifices placed upon the altar as the priest places the bread and wine upon the altar. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth, the work of human hands may become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this. By the mystery of this water and wine may become a share in the vineyard of Christ, who will himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine, the work of human hands may become our spiritual drink. The first thing that the priest will do is he will bless the bread. And then you might have noticed that he takes the wine, pours it into the chalices, and then he'll put a little drop of water in there. The prayer he prays as he does this is, By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. This might shock you, but this is the mystery of our salvation wrapped up in one silent gesture in prayer. It's so beautiful. It's the mystery of the Incarnation. The water represents Christ's humanity the wine, his divinity. And so, just as when you put a drop of water into wine, you'll never be able to separate it from the wine ever again. So too, when Christ joined himself to humanity, God could never be removed from us ever again. We would never have that separation that Adam and Eve had from God ever again. That's what this tiny gesture of putting water into wine really means. Also, throughout uh, the Old Testament, they would also put water into wine during the Passover meal as a means of helping different wines, because people would bring different wines to the Passover meal that would not always mix very well. So by putting a little wa water in there, it would help the wines to mix a little bit better. So there's that practical use as well, that that's what our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, used to do as well. And then we bless the wine. Now it's important that after the bread and wine are blessed, um, they are now sacred, they are holy, they are to be treated in a reverential way. They are not the body and blood of Jesus yet, still bread and wine, but to be treated reverently. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. And then finally, the priest washes his hands. Now for those of you wondering, why the priest doesn't use soap. Obviously, this is symbolic washing. I wash my hands before Mass even begins. But this is a symbol to symbolize the fact that priests of the Old Testament always had to wash their hands before getting ready to offer a great sacrifice. And so, too, the priest during the Mass, who is about ready to offer the greatest sacrifice of all as an instrument of Jesus Christ, needs to be purified, even if it means to the symbolic gesture of washing his hands. And when his hands are washed, he says, Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. So indeed, his sins are washed away to prepare him for the great sacrifice that he is about to offer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. The next thing that you hear is, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. 
Now, what does this even mean, my sacrifice and yours? Is Father's sacrifice somehow better than the sacrifice of all the other faithful? And so thus, his sacrifice has to be distinguished from everybody else's sacrifice? Well, of course, Father isn't speaking on behalf of himself. At this point, the priest speaks on behalf of Jesus Christ. So there's your sacrifice, the sacrifice that you and the priest personally has decided to offer up to the Father. But then there's the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which is is his body and blood. Those are the sacrifices that are going to be offered to the Father. My friends, the altar has been prepared, and now it's time to acknowledge just who is at the sacred feast. I love this candle room because it's a sign of our solidarity of prayer here at St. Peter's. It used to be our baptistry, but now it's the place where we can light candles uh, for one another and for those who have gone before us. And it's a reminder that we are not alone, that the church is more than just us here on earth. It's those in purgatory and those in heaven, there's a lot more than meets the eye. And as we continue the Mass, we must recognize that all our loved ones who have gone before us, being cleansed in purgatory or rejoicing in heaven, are there present with us at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. They are there, experiencing it all with us. Oftentimes, I think to myself, Oh my goodness, I hope that the saints show up at the offertory because I just can imagine St. Catherine of Siena in the back row going, man, is Father going to wrap this up or what? It's kind of nerve-wracking thinking about preaching to the whole community of the saints. But indeed, it's comforting to know that they are there with us, rejoicing and worshiping the Lamb of God. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may always be pleasing in your sight, and always be salutary for us, through Christ our Lord. The thing we do during Mass is we have our prayer over the offerings. It's our presidential prayer, second presidential prayer, in which the presider uh, prays to the Father through the Son, asking Him to bless the offerings that we have given to Him. with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just we move on to the preface so the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord we're experiencing that joy that we're about to be lifted up to heaven because that's what the mass does it elevates us either heaven comes down or we reach up Whatever it is, the Mass is the gateway to heaven here on earth. And then we say, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And the people acclaim in agreement, it is right and just. It is truly right and just to give thanks to God. That is one of the things that the Mass is. It's an act of thanksgiving. Eucharist means thanksgiving. And so, in some ways, the Mass really is an act of thanksgiving to God for everything He has given to us. So, during the preface, it would be good to give thanks to the God for all the things He has given to us, whether it be our family, our friends, food, shelter, for loving us so much, for giving His life on the cross for us. We have so many things to give thanks for, And so, to lift our thanks up to the Lord in that moment. And then, at the end of the preface, there's always some sort of recognition of thrones, dominions, powers. These are, of course, the angels. Not only are the saints present, but the angels are present as well. What an awesome reality. And so, 
together with the angels and the saints, we praise and adore our Father. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Then we hear the holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. This, of course, comes from what they were proclaiming on Palm Sunday. As Jesus entered into Jerusalem, Hosanna in the highest. I remember when I was a kid, I was for certain we were singing lasagna in the highest. And while it didn't really make sense to me why we would be saying that at Mass, I love lasagna, so why not? I'm sure my parents were mortified. But indeed, we sing out Hosanna in the highest, praising Him who is about to come into our lives. You see, through the Liturgy of the Word, we move through the public ministry of Jesus. Now he is approaching Jerusalem. Things are moving quickly now. Before we know it, we will be at the foot of the cross. So stay tuned as we kneel down and enter in to the most holy part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. That's coming up next week. You won't want to miss it. See you then.